All right, guys, so today we're just going to look at a couple verses, which I, I believe clearly show the three different raptures in the Bible, pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib. Um, and one of the reasons that, uh, you know, people always argue, oh, we got to wait to the end, we have to prove ourselves, but the bride has already made herself ready, right, because we are watching and waiting and seeking the Lord, uh, and the bride isn't appointed to wrath, but they're like, no, because you got to look at Matthew. It's because they don't understand who the Gospels are speaking to, and that the Holy Spirit led the different authors of the Bible to write stark differences in the same in the gospels even though it's the same story to let the reader know that those who have eyes in here let the reader understand right that there's a different group being spoken to and we're just gonna take a look at a few right now and uh see how cool this is so let me make sure i got the screen all right so let's look at luke luke 9 27 but i tell you ever truth there'll be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of god so this group is being translated that they should not see death right and they're going to the throne room the third heaven of God, the children of God, the ones like Enoch, those who are uh, uh, accounted worthy to escape all things and stand before the Son of Man, right? Now let's look at Mark. Verily I say unto you, there'll be some of them that stand here which shall not taste the death till they see the kingdom of God come with power. That is totally different. This is that great multitude rapture at the, uh, the you would say, at the end of the sixth seal, seventh seal time frame, right? Where you see Mount Zion, this place prepared, a mountain carved without hands coming down, right? And it says, it's like the, it's almost like the throne room coming down. It's saying, hide us from the one who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for that great day has come, right? So this group, uh, during this period, they're seeing this, whatever this is, coming down, this paradise, right? Uh, and all the armies of the world are going to come against it because it's kind of that hook in the jaw. And they come, and they come against the Lord, one of the, the first fights, and he destroys them, right? This is that Daniel portion where uh, the Antichrist is killed, and you see the ten kings are scattered uh, but they still live for a period, but they have no dominion anymore, right? Now let's look at Matthew. Verily I say unto you, there'll be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Well, when does Jesus come in the kingdom? Right? When all power and authority is given unto him at the end of the seventh trumpet, right? At the end, where all eyes from the east to the west, lightning from the east to the west, will see him coming, right? Uh, with When he's on his horse with all the tribulation, uh, the, the raptured saints behind him. Uh, you know, this is that portion that's only in Matthew as well. Now let's look at one more other verse real quick. And I'm going to read this relatively quick. 2 Corinthians 12, 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years, how such an one was caught up to the third heaven. He was in Christ, and it was like an apostle caught up to the third heaven. Then we have, I knew a man, no longer in Christ, how he was caught up to paradise. Right? The second time. Now let's look at the third time. Behold, I'm ready to come to you. This is Jesus coming to them at the very end. Right? 2 Corinthians 12, 14. I hope this blesses you all. Thank you guys. God bless.